If you are on the end of a very difficult conversation, um, remember that when we're thinking about if there's only basically two emotions, um, love or fear. So if anybody even is responding to me aggressively, um, they're coming from that fear-based um, villain and they're really acting out. It is not personal. So anybody of us on this call, they could be yelling at any of us. Um, so they're, they're pushing against the system. We just happen to be the person who's picked up that phone. It is only words. So, you know, sticks and stones may break my work phones, but words. I can absolutely choose if I'm going to ruminate over whatever nasty thing somebody has said to me, or I can if I'm in my gratitude practice, if I've set out the day with my am statement, I am statement, I'm not going to take other people's bad feelings personally. I'm going to be as much as possible coming from a place of compassion. So somebody can say whatever they want to say to me and I don't need to let it stick. I don't need to go home and, and talk to my dog or my partner about that. I don't need to keep on creating more and more drama about that. I can be so aware of my own self-care, so aware of my own thoughts and feelings um, that if I am getting triggered, I know I need to be playing more with my dog. I know I need to be turning the news off. I know I need to be listening to really beautiful podcasts or, or music, having a bath. I know I need to be um, playing more in the garden. Whatever it is that helps your brain come off that reaction space and get into the more, how am I going to respond to this trigger? When somebody is coming to you with aggression, matching the energy can be something that can be useful. So if somebody's really yelling at me, I might, might turn my volume. Um, I might turn my volume up to actually match them as um, to be able to say, well, Tiny, I'm so sorry that's happened to you. That really doesn't seem fair. So I'm not making Tony wrong. Um, and I am agreeing with him. So it's very difficult for him to push back at me. So again, do your own little experiments around this. I've already told you that I used to do a lot of, well, I still do a lot of role play work. Um, one of the scenarios I used to play was a patient who was really, really angry. Um, and we used to play that out with a lot of medical students. Um, so I was busy in a backless gown um, role playing with medical students one time. And my mission was to be really angry. So I was complaining about the food. I was complaining about somebody having died in the bed next door. You name it, I was complaining about it. And this really beautiful um, young students came in there and sort of um, sat in the bed and I'm busily complaining. And he said, Deborah, he said, I'm so sorry. That really does sound like you've had a rough time. And it was practically almost impossible for me to kind of ramp it up again because he hadn't pushed back against me. He'd been really respectful and he'd agreed that I was having a hard time. So when we're thinking about coming from a place of compassion um, and actually getting to some sort of capacity to soothe both myself and the other person, Again, these are some of the ways that we can actually make people feel heard, which is generally what, we've, what we need to feel if we are feeling like we don't have any power. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.